Today we are going to be talking about this instrument here, the B-flat tenor trombone. This particular example has a reasonably modern development on it in that it includes this extra loop of tubing here. This tubing can be manually selected by pressing this trigger, which turns this rotor here, which selects this tubing to be included throughout the length of the instrument. That inclusion alters the pitch of this instrument down a perfect fourth. Now this is a modern tenor trombone. And if we look back only a few decades, we'll find that this looks completely different to what our fathers or grandfathers would have played if they were trombonists. This instrument here is an 80 year old tenor trombone. It has the same amount of tubing minus the trigger as we would see with modern trombones, but the instrument is much narrower here and the slide is not as wide here. The diameter of this tubing or the bore is also a lot smaller, a lot narrower than what we would find with modern trombones. And lastly, the bell, this part here, is a lot smaller. A direct side-by-side -side comparison of the heights of the instruments shows that the height at the main tuning slide is almost identical. This trombone is marginally taller because these tubes are narrower and closer together. Side by side we can see the difference in uh, width of the trombone. And if I hold the trombones like this we can also see the difference in bell diameter. This trombone is so narrow that if I hold it in a playing position, uh, due to the width of my neck, I can't get it perfectly in line. This tube here cuts quite a lot into my neck, which is why I presume that there is this cloth neck uh, comforter. The sound of an antique trombone such as this uh, is quite a lot different from the modern trombone sound. Because it is a, uh, has much narrower tubing, and the bell size is a lot smaller, it creates a sound that is a lot thinner and more direct than what we find with modern trombones. Now unfortunately the slide on this instrument doesn't work very well. It's all rusty and corroded and I need to do some major restorative work. But the harmonic series of this trombone sounds like this. It is quite an interesting instrument to try and play when I'm used to playing much more uh, modern instruments. This trombone's harmonic series sounds like this. It takes a lot more air to be able to support the notes on this trombone than what it does with one of these old style trombones. And I'm not sure if the microphone in my phone is picking this up too well, uh, but the sound is a lot fuller, a lot rounder. Uh, and it's, to my ears, more desirable because I've always been taught to play with a round sound, uh, a nice full tone. And that's not something that is conducive uh, when you're putting air through an instrument as narrow, as small as this trombone here. Now I mentioned before about these triggers. Now these triggers uh, serve a couple of main features. The first one is that it enables you to use alternate positions. For example, a concert C on a tenor trombone is normally in sixth position, which is right out here. If you have small arms, or sorry, if you have short arms, that position can sometimes be a little bit of a stretch. Even for me, it's, it, it's, near, the length of, it's near the end of my arm to reach that position. This trigger, however, means that I can play the same note in this closed position. It also means higher up in the register, I don't have to move the slide at all. One 
one of the easiest pieces to play on the tenor trombone is Yankee Doodle. <laughs> key differences with the trombone family compared to other brass instruments is that it changes note by using a slide. This slide can be put at various positions to uh, enable the player to have a completely chromatic range. That note, a concert E, is the lowest note that would normally be available chromatically on a trombone. But by using this trigger, we can go down even further. And now with the trigger. And then we've reached what's called the pedal region. The pedal region is uh, the instrument's actual fundamental tone. It is the bass sound of the instrument. And we've got a further range deepening from that. The main feature of the trombone family is the slide. This slide enables the trombone to get a chromatic range and it also enables special sound effects such as the glissando. This instrument is a rotary valve bass trumpet. It is a similar register to the tenor trombone. It plays in the same pitch, but instead of having a slide, it's got these three valves. These, these three valves mean that this instrument can also play chromatically, but unlike the trombone, this instrument can't naturally achieve a glissando. The only way to do that is to either move the valves very fast to give the impression of a glissando, or to hold the valves half down to achieve a sort of muffled, strangled, cat groaning sort of a glissando. Doesn't sound very attractive and it has limited use. Though with practice, that sound can be improved on, but it is a never a substitute for the glissando you can achieve on a trombone. Instruments such as this bass trumpet enjoy the flexibility that you can have when you've got valves available to you. It is very easy to play fast phrases of music uh, because you don't necessarily have to tongue each note. <laughs> tenor trombone we can play the same phrase but instead of slurring the notes we have to tongue each note individually What that little demonstration was aimed to prove was that you're not limited by having a slide instead of valves. Anything you can do with valves, you can do with a slide.
for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching.